Greetings friends and welcome to another Kits and Bits Scale Model and Build. This one is a bit of an extra special one. It's something a little bit different to what I normally do in that I've included a little bit of diorama work. Before we crack on with that though, I need to say a very big thank you to Wayne Welly for sending me this kit and to Danny for designing the cradle that the lightning sits on. Without either of you, this build would not have been possible. And without further ado, let's crack on with the build. So first up, before I cut anything out, I needed to mark where I was going to cut. This was done, as you can see, with a fine point marker and was done everywhere I needed to cut out. This was then followed up by cutting out the marked parts using my variable speed rotary tool. Because the lightning had been sat there for years and had been worn away and bits had been taken off it, precision wasn't a thing. There were parts that demanded a little bit of precision, such as these hatches here, but those were simply cut away and then filed down to make them the precise size and shape. Once I was happy with all the car parts, I went over all the joints with Tamir Extra Thing just to take away all the burrs and the loose parts. Any larger parts were then cut away using my CMK model of sort. These included the ailerons, the flaps and a few larger bits which couldn't be done with anything but a saw and a craft knife. Incidentally, if you don't have a CMK hobby saw, I highly recommend one. They are thoroughly useful bits of kit, both for cutting and for scribing panel line. Next, I drilled out some holes to give it a little bit more depth. These were both added as points of interest, decayed holes through the skin and places where bolts and nuts had been removed. Once all the bodywork was done, it was time to move on to detailing the wing. By detailing, I mean cutting out. This was just the ailerons and certain parts of the wing. This was again done using my CMK saw. After cutting out so much of the bodywork, when the two halves were put together there was a whacking great hole in the middle of the fuselage. Given that no such hole existed on the real example, I needed to cut out and shape some styrene and glue it in place. The undercarriage legs were then added with CA glue. First layers of paint were then put down using my Galeri with a 0.3 airbrush needle. This was slightly over thinned because I wanted it to look slightly darker than the actual colour was. This was done using RAF Green 2 from Tamiya. The underside was then done using medium sea grey again using paints from Tamiya. The overall tone and colour of the paints didn't need to necessarily be exactly spot on because they're going to be heavily weathered, faded and filtered anyway. So the end result is going to be much, much different to the actual colour that's being put down in the first instance. Thank you. 
for some reason that I'm not quite sure of, some of the panels had been painted in a darker, more foresty green. So we cracked on with that using a hairy stick and RLM 70 from AK Interactive. At this point, you'll usually hear me moaning about how much I hate putting decals on. I still hate putting decals on, but because it was very much weathered and oversprayed, I only really bothered with the big ones that you could see, so there were no stenciling decals put on, which made the job about 10 minutes long and really quite enjoyable. These were put on in the usual way of dipping it in warm water and then using micro scale, micro set and micro sol just to conform it and set it to the aircraft. A very, very, very watered down coat of white was then put over the top. When I say very watered down, I mean it was probably 5% paint, 95% thinner. This is literally just to give it a slightly faded patina. I noticed that in some of the pictures, the green paint had this really odd red tinge to it. So I filtered it using MIG Ammo Red, which turned out to be too heavy. So afterwards I took some of that off using a dryer brush to give it just this slightly red tinge as you can see in the photos. As you can see from this photo, this has slightly a contentious slogan right at the bottom, but in order to get the graffiti looking right, it was important to get all the layers done right from the bottom, which meant layering all the graffiti that was written on there in the order it was written on. Now this happened to be quite easy to find because there were lots of photos of it over the years, which meant I could kind of chart the graffiti and find out which layers went on in which order but because this picture is quite at an angle it meant that I couldn't actually see who was accused of being quite loose shall we say that being the case I chose a <clears throat> random name to put in there and cracked on with that again the order of the graffiti was important to get the look right and although most of this will not actually be seen in fact i think there's only a little bit of the lines on either side that will be seen in the end i still painted the entire mural anyway you'll see this all the way throughout where i'm under painting and painting stuff which literally doesn't get seen but it does add to the effect of the layered graffiti that you can see in the final photo Getting the graffiti in scale proved to be a little bit of a problem for this. I needed a really, really fine point. This was a brand new brush. I think it was a, a 20 over zero that I bought specifically for this because I wanted to use a brand new brush um, with a point on it that had never been used before. Because of the complexity of a scale model not being I don't know as big perhaps as the real thing some of the stuff that I had to paint on there had to be slightly larger than would be in real life if that makes sense in order for it to be seen ie the drips of paint had to be slightly out of scale for them to be noticeable
The layers of paint that are underneath the final mural that was on the tail are very old and worn and storm battered. So in order to get that effect before I painted over with the final mural, I sanded it with some thousand grit sandpaper just to give it a worn distressed look. The final tail piece was a big old chunky bit of art and because the final colour was red and it was going down over white and black I knew it was going to take quite a few layers to actually get the red to be the right opacity. So after sketching out the lines roughly with a white brush I then went over it and filled it in using red from Vallejo. Because there were several coats while this was drying, I moved on to making the red markings on the wings. Now, for some reason, there are some sort of red tape across the wings and the tail. So I moved on to making these simply with Tamiya tape, painting them with exactly the same red as I had in the tail, placing them on, and then once they had dried, painting over them to make them a little darker. Once that was done, I returned to painting the silver on the tail. Now, because I didn't want to use a lacquer based paint, which likely would have taken the acrylic paint off as soon as I went over it, I had to use an acrylic silver, which is not really a great paint. And it left ridges and bumpy surfaces. This isn't really noticeable from a distance, but up close you can see that it's not as smooth on the model as it is on the original, obviously because it was spray painted. On the wing there was some black writing. I got a bit lazy, let's just say, and didn't really want to mess about using a paintbrush. So we used a fine tip marker to write in all the black marker that I presume was done with a permanent marker on the wing. Once all the graffiti was on, I once again gave it a filtered wash using very watered down acrylic paint just to fade it that little bit more and give it that weathered out in the rain look. From there we moved on to a little bit more of the finer weathering. Using some oil paints I put some streaks in. Now this was done the normal way just using oil paints and uh, Tamiya X20A thinner. Um, there is a tutorial on my other channel, Kits and Bits Extra, if you're interested in learning about that. These were applied using various different colours of brown, black, a mixture of black, brown, rust as well. To give the impression of it being aged and sow in the rain with streak marks and all of that. On the pictures, there's a very pronounced black mark on the tail. I'm not sure what it is, but it's very streaky and it's very drippy. And to do this, I just smeared black oil paint all along the back, used a feathered brush to brush it down. And then to get some bigger streaks, I used a wet brush. Next, a very, very light pin wash, panel line wash, call it what you will. By very light, I mean very light. It was very highly diluted with oil paint and thinner, very much more thinner than oil paint. And it's really only just to create the impression of some false highlights. I don't really want the, the panel lines 
lit up too much if that makes sense because it will draw away from what we really want to be focusing on which is the graffiti so once this was done we just wiped it off in the normal way with some enamel thinner just to clean up the areas where we didn't want any marks or blemishes a big thank you to Danny who uh, designed this cradle for me I couldn't find this anywhere as a 3d download so without him this build wouldn't have been possible I'm now just painting a few details that are going on the diorama base uh, there's the cradle some tires a palette a few bits and pieces I decided that it would be best rather than to concentrate on one photo to make a kind of collage of the lightning over the years so that's what I've done using various 3d prints once those were done I marked and cut the base the original base was slightly too big so this had to be uh, scored and cut using a sharp knife. As you can see, this wasn't as sharp as I needed it to be. The veneer was then marked and cut. This was not really a problem as it's only a very, very light piece of wood. So it could be scored, bent off and then put to the side for later use. After pushing the lightning down gently into the foam and then marking it with a pencil, I then used some very, very strong Wolverine PVA glue to put down some static grass and some dirt. This was done with a cheap static grass applicator bought from eBay. Whilst the results that I'd been using before it had been good, this made it even better. I then applied some woodland scenic earth texture to the rest of the diorama to fill out the rest of it before I put the stones and shale on. After that was done I diluted some PVA glue and sprayed it through a spray bottle all over to hold it in place. This also helps to stick the stones, the shale and the gravel down. The shale and the gravel was a slightly darker shade of grey than the shale and the gravel I've got. To replicate this, I went over it with MIG Ammo One Shot, which is basically just the old badge of Steiner Res rebranded. This will give me the basis of the dark grey low lights for which I can then lighten it and make it the approximate shade of grey I can see in the photos. Sky Grey by Tamir was then used to add the mid-tones and the slight subtle highlights to the gravel. From there the individual stones were painted, some in lighter colours, some in darker colours, some in completely different colours. To add more low lights and shadows I then added Tamiya panel line brown.
before wiping away the excess and lightening it slightly using Tamir X20 thinner. The whole thing was then dry brushed using light ghost grey to highlight the edges and pick out the corners of the stones. After gluing the cradle down using PVA glue, it was then time to add a few more of the details, such as the concrete posts. pallet and the tyres. Whilst in the final pictures the backdrop had been a scrapyard, these are all items that had appeared over the years in the pictures so had been added to add visual interest. After adding some PVA glue to the cradle and to the bottom of the lightning's fins, all that was left to do was to drop it into place and add some bushes. The bushes were added off camera, but you'll see them in the final photos, which are now coming up. Thank you very much for joining me for this. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did building it. Without further ado, here are the glamour shots. A big big thank you to all my channel members whose names you can see on the screen right now. Your support really really is appreciated and I really could not run this channel without your generous donations. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and share as this really helps with the YouTube algorithm and the YouTube algorithm has changed recently so I need all the help I can get. Until next time my friends, adieu, stay safe and happy modelling.